Welcome to this clear fact. Today we continue what we started last time. You remember, Michela? Of course, I remember. We talked about, you know, what happens if I finish my treatment and I still have some space, you know, in my between the teeth. So. My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute, and my name is Michaela Sinert, and I'm a general dentist in Germany. And we answer the question right after this. If you like these videos, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? And click on the little bell, then you're gonna be notified every time we upload a new video and don't forget to give us the thumbs up. Michela. Stefan. I did everything that you said last time in the video and that I said also in the <laughs> video. And still, sometimes I have some residual spaces at the end. Does it happen to you? Of course, it happens to us too. You know, when we check the contact points at the ending or when we finish our cases, we do have sometimes some parts, you know, some interproximal spaces where we say, mm, that's not perfect. We don't want to leave it like that. So, Stefan, what you are you doing in those cases? I mean, what is the solution? We don't want to have a patient that has a loose contact point. So... Exactly. And, you know, it, especially if everything is perfect. I mean, the occlusion is good, the alignment is good, and the only thing left to do is to close these little spaces. Now you have to try to prevent it, like we said last time, try to do a little bit less IPR. But still, if you did all that and you still have these spaces, you want to close these spaces. And ideally, you would not have to order additional aligners only for that. So if you think about that before, when you do your treatment planning, when you stage your treatment, try to prevent this and order some overcorrection aligners. To do what? Well, overcorrection <laughs> aligners, Michela, are aligners that overcorrect. Oh, that is, well, makes sense. Thank you for the explanation. So when you go and you enter your ClinCheck software, you will see all the tools there at the top. And there's this tool here called Over. How is it called in, in German? Über. What? <laughs> yes. With two dots on the U. On the U, two dots. Über. <laughs> Uber? You have Uber Invisalign. So this a tool is the overcorrection stages. And you can ask to always have these overcorrection stages. So what do they do, Michela, these overcorrection stages? They overcorrect. When you click on this tool, what happens? Look at the bottom. I will click again. Look what happens at the bottom where you have all the stages. When I click on it, there's three little stages, additional stages with blue lines. This is the overcorrection, Michela. That's true. And you can see it really well. And this is even if you go on the little, you know, like you do it now on the aligner stage, it says overcorrection aligner. So, Stefan, um, coming back to the space we were talking about, what are you doing with those overcorrection aligners? I mean, you can order overcorrection aligners, you know, but what, what especially are they doing? Because this is interesting. So, let's go right just before the overcorrection stop here now i will make the the clean check play and you will see what happens did you see that michela I it's saw like it. okay it's let's like do it again <laughs> it's like magic like overcorrect amazing so it's, what we see here um those overcorrection aligners you're using them for, I mean, those are the places where you did IPR. I mean, maybe you can show us. Um, and um, those overcorrection aligners, they're just there, you know, to, how would you say, to tighten everything up at the end of the treatment, right? 
to close that's the, that space, what you might have left because of doing IPR or because of uh, any other situation. So, um, yes, do, do I have to use them? I mean, if you right. if you say you always order them, but how you know how would you do it uh, if let's say you just have one one tiny contact that is a little loose? Would you use all three? Does it depends how often you see the patient on that? I mean, you just let the patient go from the beginning with those aligners. What is your procedure? How are you doing this at your clinic? The idea with these uh, overcorrection aligners is you use them if you need them. They are there by default. Um, and you can ask for them in your clinical preferences. So all my cases have these three overcorrection aligners at the end. If I do IPR, I have them. If I don't do any IPR, I, I have them also because I just want them to be there if I need them. If I don't need them, I don't use them. I may need only one, I may need two, I may need three. And it will really depend on how much space I have uh, between the teeth, how much residual space. And to tell you, uh, I mean, there's no recipe for that. You, it, it goes with, you know, experience and feeling. But, you know, remember what are the, the parameters of clear aligners. So every aligner moves the teeth 0.2 millimeter. That's so it. think about that. Think of mm -hmm. how much space you have to close. The other thing about that is you can have these uh, overcorrection aligners closing the spaces from cuspid to cuspid or for the whole arch. Yes, yes. So um, just to make sure that uh, everybody uh, gets it right, the patient wears it like a normal aligner, right? So we're changing every week. We don't um, uh, change that if we go on the overcorrection, uh, overcorrection aligners. And I mean, they have special names. If you just have from the cuspid to cuspid. Your patients? My patients have special names too, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's usually named. Well, sometimes not. Sometimes it's confusing. Even by the, you know, it confuses me really, really um, fast names now. But anyways, going back to that, the names look of the overcorrection. The, look at the panel when you're confused with the name. <laughs> yes. So please tell us. I mean, you just said from cuspid to cuspid and the whole arch. So yeah. um, who decides on that? Because you said it's in your clinical preferences. So. Well, you decide on that. You should decide on that. Clinical preferences are there like a, for general preferences, but every case is unique. So in your special instruction, when you fill your prescription, you should ask for this case if you want it from cuspid to cuspid or maybe from terminal molar to terminal molar uh, for the whole arch, depending maybe on the type of movements you're doing and depending on the IPR. If you have a lot of IPR everywhere from molar to molar, well, you might as well ask for the whole arch. If, you only are, if you're only doing a treatment that is limited to the anterior teeth, there's not a big chance that you're going to open space in the back if you're not even mo moving the premolars and, and the molars. So in these cases, you can ask for a, a overcorrection aligners only from cuspid to cuspid. So you have to go with the, the type of case. And this is, I mean, again, Michel, this is what we're doing. This is, I don't rely on the software to do everything. I want to decide myself. I want to be in control. Yeah. I'm a control freak. And, and you know, this is what we uh, said in the... Uh, no, video there's, sorry, video. this is where you should say, Stefan, you're not a control freak. Come on. You are not a control freak, but it's really, really awesome <laughs> that you are in control, um, especially by doing uh, all the treatment planning. But this is just what we said before. You know, the software can maybe see um, the, the, um, the type of contact points we have um, on the occlusion, but it has no idea, even from the beginning, even if we do another scan, you know, during the treatment, how tight the contact points are between those teeth and this is why um, sometimes you know the IPR is one thing but the other thing is you know how you wish to have your contact points um, and if you check this at the end and this is what it's for the overcorrection aligners and that um, you might need you know C chain or what is the other for the whole arch called how you call it the C chain is for cuspid to cuspid the power chain power is chain. for the whole arch. That's so, it. And a good way to remember it is C chain, because sometimes it's confusing. Which one is C chain is for cuspid, C, cuspid, cuspid, C. How do you say cuspid in German? Eck 
Eckzahn. Bei den Tests so let's call it the Eckzahn chain. The Eckzahn chain. <laughs> Eckzahn chain. Eckzahn. It doesn't really sound German when it I say it. German. The Eckzahn chain. You know what? You're. Um, thank you for that explanation. You're really good. Uh, you should continue with your German lessons. Yeah. Well, I know I should, but you know, I'm not sure I'm in control there. <laughs> you are. So excellent, Stefan. Michela, that's everything we have for you today. My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. And my name is Michaela Zunat. I'm a general dentist in Germany. We'll see you again next time. Oh, if you stayed up here, it's because you like these videos now. If you like these videos, you should subscribe. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? And don't forget to click on the little bell so you've got to be notified every time we upload a new video. And you know what? Give us the thumbs up. It makes us so happy.